Good evening and welcome. I'd like to call this school board meeting to order Monday, May 23rd at 7.36 p.m. Please stand as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing and join us for a moment of silence. Join us for a moment of silence as we reflect on the men and women serving in the United States Armed Forces, those fighting in harm's way, our prisoners of war, and those missing in action. Thank you. Uh, please remain standing this evening. We have a special presentation before we post the colors. We're going to share with you the O.N.J. Roberts Middle School students singing the national anthem at a recent Phillies game. For sharing that. Please post the colors. Thank you. Item four on the agenda, executive session announcement. I would like to announce that executive sessions were held on the following days. Monday, April 25th at 8.40 p.m. to discuss personnel matters. Monday, May 16th at 9.35 p.m. to discuss legal matters. Monday, May 23rd, 6.30 p.m. to discuss personnel matters. This brings us to item five on the agenda, superintendent's report. Dr. Joel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Stone. Good evening, everyone. We have a series of student recognitions. We will be recognizing our bus drivers. As well, we will be making our monthly budget update. We're going to begin with Dr. Mendy Skozen, who will do the introductions and understand for our special audience. Dr. Skozen. Elementary School, Prince Creek Elementary School, West Vincent, 
North Coventry, O.N.J. Roberts Middle School, and the high school. Uh, many of these students will want to participate in our um, state summer games, which are held at Penn State University this June. Uh, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to um, Wendy Skosen, our special education supervisor, who will introduce the, uh, the student athletes and their teachers. We have a beautiful day at Coast Bell. Uh, the sun was shining, and the students, uh, staff, faculty, and parents, I think, had a great experience. So today I'm here to honor the Special Olympians who were able to join us on this fine evening. Okay. From our Community Connections Program, which is, we're going to start down here with Kristen Burke, who is the teacher. We have Shannon Dunning. Come on, Chief. 
Marissa Ray, and Tyler Kevin. Hold this wire. And I also want to introduce, um, I do not do this myself. We have an awful lot of adults who help us out. So I do want to introduce um, our mentors that work with us. Um, our number one fundraiser, Dr. Sharon Davidheiser.
had to climb to the top of the tower, which was usually a little bit taller than the one we have here, and hit the top of the first before any of the other robots hit the top. If you did that, you got an additional huge amount of points to help you win the match. Uh, the more points you get, obviously, the uh, better you do in the match. All right. Thank you. 
actually hear that it is breaking things, seeing that we have the machine plus all that equipment over there. Uh, so that was excellent. Very impressive. Um, okay, guys, don't forget to hear. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Burnett uh, with our tech program. Um, as you're seeing tonight, we have a number of programs that apply a lot of what they learn in class and school to different projects in the extracurricular activities. So, Mr. Burnett will be uh, talking about the tech program and introducing his uh, uh, students. Uh, good evening. Uh, SEPA, you know, SEPA is the only club operating in the nation's high schools and vocational schools for students interested in careers in marketing, merchandising, and entrepreneurship. SEPA uh, focuses on four main facets, leadership development, both vocational understanding, civic conscious, and social intelligence. This year, Owen J. Roberts competed at district, state, and national level. In addition, we raised uh, over $5,000 for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Um, the national competition was held uh, this year in Orlando, Florida at the end of April. Seven of the Owen J. Roberts Echo members competed. There were 15,000 students in competition from all 50 states and around the world. Uh, with over $500,000 of scholarship money was given out. And uh, two of our four projects from Owen J. Roberts placed in the top 10 in their categories. Each category has 200 projects in it. So it's a huge accomplishment. Please help me welcome the members in attendance tonight, um, Amanda Morabli. Rachel Barrett, Avery Jameson, 
Kevin Hendershot, Jordan Roach, Ryan Sayers, Danica Sweck, East Vincent, Liam Conway, Alex Glazier, Kelsey Kilgallen, George Cullen, Matt Braun, Holden Smith, and Elise Stewart. French Creek, Kelsey Roach, Serena Butler, Carolyn Cody, Artemis Cross, Mary Flattery, Quinn Kratz, and Angeline Beaton. And for North Coventry, Morgan Baker, got it, I almost mispronounced it, thank you for your help. Lily Fiddler, Simone Crew, Lucas Gray, Quentin Heisey, Trevor Metzger, and Owen Van Helman, and I have two, let's say, in the back. Two of the coaches from August here with us too. Patty, Janda, you can wave and come up. And the angelic Rose May. <laughs>
and is Mr. Brooks. And, uh, he's been invaluable to my decision making process um, throughout the year. And hopefully, we won't have that much occasion to see that all the going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Someone said you had no gray hair before I got it. <laughs> 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 uh, I'd like to turn to now uh, our budget presentation for the month. We did say last month that each month we would give to the community a uh, brief update on the budget. And this from Ryan is assuming our responsibility for us to see. Thank you, Dr. Bordelio. Um, this evening we had a fine example of the kind of education, the quality education that we provide at OJ Roberts. Um, and equally important is making sure we have the resources and using those resources responsibly to fund that. Uh, we have a brief presentation regarding the proposed budget for 2011-12. And Dr. Tarsalomeo, as he mentioned before, will be doing this every month because as we move forward into future years, we will have greater challenges than we do this year. Even. Sorry to be fair to But our challenges really are going to be maintaining excellence in uncertain financial and political times. If you've been reading the newspapers, um, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Significant budget challenges for 2011-12 are the teaser's rate projections. Um, right now, the financial impact equates to approximately $6 million over the next four years. Um, that's a significant budget challenge, not just for, Pen for, for OJ Roberts, but for all Pennsylvania school districts. We've been experiencing declining revenues because of assessed values. Um, companies, individuals are appealing their tax assessment. So we have about $2 million loss over the last two years per year. We do see this leveling out, though, so that's good news. That appears to be leveling out. And then on March 8th, we were hit with the governor's budget proposal, which proposed that we would lose state funding uh, equating to about one and a half million dollars. Just to give you a quick summary of the budget timeline that we've been following this year, we have been meeting approximately twice a month with the board and the public, giving them regular updates either through committee of the whole, finance committee meeting, or a school board meeting. So right now, on May 23rd, the school board meeting, the board acknowledges receipt of the budget, the proposed budget, and then we advertise to the public that it's on display. It must sit for 20 days, and then the board must approve a final budget prior to June 30th in order for tax bills to be issued July 1st and for the district to receive their state subsidy funding um, from the state. Our June board meeting is scheduled for June 20th. This is the process that we use, planning, preparation, adoption, implementation, and then evaluation. So it really is a process that goes on all year long. Just to give you a quick snapshot of the, or a visual really, of the PSERS rate projections right now. Green is the current, we're at 8.22%. Next year is a significant budget impact for us, but beyond that, in 12, 13, 13, 14, and 14, 15, we're going to see some significant spikes that we need to manage. Um, our student enrollment history of projections, green is the current, we're at about 5,023 students at the end of September. Over the next four years, we anticipate increasing approximately 400 students, and then we level out. But that is really dependent upon the economy. And once the economy picks up, we know we have tons of open land, and developers will begin again to develop that land, and there will be additional rooms. Preliminary budget right now, the local sources are anticipated to increase about 2%. You'll see decreases in the state funding because of the state's reduction. And in federal sources, this is the last year for the, you might have heard about the ERA funding or the federal stimulus money that was available for schools, so that money goes away, so that's a reduction for us this year. So really, our revenues are going to be relatively flat. Just so you have an idea of what makes up our revenue, it primarily is local local revenue. And if you go to the next slide, Richard, it's mostly property taxes. Because we are in a community um, that doesn't have much business. We're mostly residences. 
So the residents really bear the burden in our communities with property taxes. And that's really based on how property is zoned within the communities and the townships. The um, expenditure budgets are, right, what you see is just a summary of the responsibility cost centers, which ones are going up and which ones are going down. Um, the, I just want to point out that there is a footnote on total administrative support cost centers and personnel. You see a, a, a big flip there. That's because we are, we, we went self-insured and we're now required to report our self-insured medical insurance and an internal service fund. So you're seeing us take that out of the personnel and put it into administrative support cost centers because that's where we budget for transfers over to that fund. So an estimated 1.2% uh, increase in expenditures. And this just gives you a quick snapshot of what we really, the bulk of what we pay for in our school district. And it's indicative of most schools. Our, our greatest resources are our professional staff. And salaries and benefits comprise the biggest portion of the budget, a little over 60%. Other than that, there's purchase property services, contractual, contracted, um, and service agreements. Supplies and equipment, a little over 3%, and other 13.92%, which, which makes a really fun transfer step service, those kinds of things. The, the current proposed budget has a comparative tax impact to the median taxpayer of $108. It, in the budget is a proposed 0.65 mil increase from 2010-11 to 2011-12. And this is just giving you an idea of where most of the Chester County schools are, where the index is, which is the Act 1 index, which is 1.4%, which is the lowest that has ever been. Keeping in mind that the Act 1 index always lags the economy. So they come out in September, and they're projecting that index for the following school year. So we're always one year in arrears with the index. Chester County average as of May 11th was 3.3%, and the district's tax rate proposed increase is 2.48%. But I will add that if the state had fully funded us to the level that they did the prior year, that increase would only be about 1.68%, not 2.4%. And we have cut approximately $2.5 million from the budget from when we first started. Again, our largest challenge is going to be maintaining the excellent programs that we have in the school district in the uncertain financial and political environment. So that's the budget update this month. Thanks. Thank you very much. I'd like to turn now to another one of the students of ours, the high school. I would like to introduce 
Colin Gray, the president-elect of the student government. Can you stand up, Colin? Joel. Thank you, Julia. That brings us to item six on the agenda, public comment on agenda items, information proposals and statements from individuals pertaining to items on the agenda. Speakers are to please indicate your name, township, and the item on the agenda to which your comments are addressed. We ask that you uh, limit yourself to no more than three minutes. That moves us to item seven on the agenda, board committee reports. Committee of the whole, there was not a committee of the whole meeting in May. The next meeting for the committee of the whole will be held on, held on Monday, June 6th at 6 p.m. in the administration boardroom. We will now review individual committees that have met since our last meeting. Uh, building and grounds, Mr. Kleinfelder. Thank you. The meeting of the buildings and grounds was held on Monday, May 9, in the administration building at 6 p.m. Um, it was a short meeting. Um, first item we discussed was the current um, building projects here within the school district, uh, West Benson, the middle school, and the high school. Most of those projects are wrapping up at this time. Uh, we had a brief conversation in regards to the mobile classrooms and potential use of East Coventry Elementary School. Um, we had a um, proposal to um, fix storm water uh, drainage issues at the Bell School and on Cadmus Road, and those items are on the agenda tonight for board approval. And we received an update on the Delaware River Basin um, well here at the high school. That, uh, the next meeting is scheduled for Monday, June 13th at 6 p.m. in the administration room and boardroom at the Prison Report. Thank you, Mr. Kleinfelder. That moves us to the Chester County Intermediate Unit Board. Ms. Barkas. The Chester County Intermediate Unit Board of Directors held its monthly meeting on May 18, 2011 at the Educational Service Center in Downingtown. The following items were discussed and acted upon. Chester County students participating in the Real World Navy Challenge presented their project and explained the program to the IU Board. This challenge involved a crisis at the Lindbergh Nuclear Power Plant. Students took on the role of NRC inspectors as part of the game play, worked in teams using web-based team portals, conducted research, and worked collaborati collaboratively with subject matter experts to avert a catastrophe. The students were given a problem to solve and devised a solution for that problem. 22 teachers met at the Philadelphia Naval Yard this summer and created that question. And it just so happened we saw Downingtown present and they started it the day after the earthquake hit Japan. So it real, real world impact, real world um, learning. Different Chester County districts that participated in this was Avongrove, Downingtown, Coatesville, Octorator, Phoenixville, and Westchester. And I'm hoping to see O&J partaking in this next year. We also discussed, we were having a really interesting conversation regarding um, how society now views the only role for successful seniors to go to college and how um, our CAT schools are potentially losing students because school districts are pulling out because of the cost. Just to want to give you this quick fact that I think you'll find interesting. Um, the IU Practical Nursing Program Director reported that a poll conducted by the Knowledge Networks for John J. Hedrick Center for Workforce Development at Rutgers said, a recent survey of college graduates indicates that in the last three years, approximately 50% of college nursing graduates have secured jobs at an average salary of 30 grand a year. Meanwhile, 
Graduates of the IU Practical Nursing Program, which can come after Allied Health instead of college, during the same time period have a job placement rate of greater than 90% and an average salary of 40 grand a year. Not to mention all the trades that are giving kids the opportunity to go out, learn the trade, get a job in the trade, go back for the associate's degree for the business, and then own their own business producing the trade. They were saying that um, welding with, help me out, shale. Priscilla shale. Priscilla shale. That they're looking for welders and there's not enough competent tradesmen. So just to give you a perspective of where we're going, not to mention how much college is costing kids these years. Okay, now I'm off my soapbox. Back to what we're talking about. Um, the IU Board of Directors next meeting will be Wednesday, June 15th at 2011 at 8 p.m. And I also have to re reference the need to support the IU's budget from us, the Chester County School District, because just tonight you saw our Special Olympics participants and you have no idea what the IU contributes to us servicing our kids with special needs. Just keep that in mind too. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Barkas. Curriculum and instruction. Okay. <laughs> Curriculum instruction committee meet had a meeting on May 16, 2011. Kathy Soder brought to our attention K-12 interventions. She focused on RTII in the elementary schools. In the middle schools, we had a presentation regarding literature links, and in the high school, we had a presentation regarding direct instruction and how we're able to provide interventions on all levels in our schools. And that concludes my meeting minutes. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Marcus. Extracurricular and interscholastic, Mrs. Belinsky. Uh, very important at this time. Thank you, Mrs. Belinsky. Finance Committee, Mr. Fries. No <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Fries. Legislative and Policy, no Mr. Filter. Personnel Committee, Mr. Hughes. Uh, yes, Mr. President, we had a, a short meeting on May 16th at 8.30 p.m. We uh, reviewed the current positions that are being uh, uh, recruited for the North Coventry Principal, West Vincent Principal, and also Human Resources Director. Uh, we are hopeful uh, that the Human Resources Director will be appointed in June, and the North Coventry and West Vincent Principal positions shortly thereafter. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. Uh, pupil services, special education. Mrs. Edinger is not with us this evening. Is I have her minutes. If you want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On May 16, 2011, Pupil Services held its first committee meeting of the year. We were introduced to the Navarin system, which is a high school um, counseling software system that allows students not only to pick colleges learn about careers they could possibly interest it, be interested in, but also learn, learn, helps them identify their different learning styles. We received a presentation about SRA and how it's being used in elementary special education programs. We had a presentation regarding occupational therapy and how we are going to move forward providing those services throughout the district. And Dr. Hemberger presented information regarding decision insight on how we would go about getting our future enrollment without using the census. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mrs. Vargas. Technology Committee, Mrs. McMeekin. No report. Thank you, Mrs. McMeekin. Transportation Committee, Mr. Freeze. No report. Thank you, Mr. Freeze. That moves us to item eight on the agenda, which is recommended routine matters. The board will acknowledge receipt of items 8.1 to 8.14 as a consent agenda. Second. Moved by Mr. Free, second by Ms. McMeekin. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. That moves us to item nine on the agenda, approval of routine matters. The board is being asked to approve routine matters, items 9.1 to 
9.4 as a consent agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. McMeekin, second by Mrs. Polinsky. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. That brings us to item 10 on the agenda, board communication. Ms. Carmine, was there any? Thank you, Mrs. Kremine. Uh, item 11 on the agenda, board discussion. Mr. President, I have one, uh, one message I'd like to read. A reminder, on our agenda tonight are uh, two agreements, Act 93 and Confidential Secretary Agreements. I would like to take a minute to recognize that in both, the Act 93 staff and Confidential Secretaries have agreed to a 0% increase for next year. By holding their salaries flat, both groups recognize the difficult economic times we are in as a community and as a district. Also to align themselves, our administrative team, including Dr. D. Bartolomeo, Dr. Soder, and Mrs. Cromerine, have volunteered to return their raises to the district so that every available dollar can be spent on the education of our students. I applaud our leadership team in making this decision. I did. Additionally, for the second year in a row, administration has reduced overall management positions, and on the agenda tonight, we'll be eliminating two EFTs, including a recently vacated confidential secretary position and the position formerly held by Dr. Scalise. These are tough decisions, and I applaud your leadership, Dr. Deep Bartolomeo. Thank you very much. I would like to uh, just bring up something that's a little past due. Uh, it's to uh, Mr. Larry Walker and the security uh, group. Uh, they have uh, received uh, much recognition for uh, having safe schools, and for, uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Mulder for uh, getting us to that position, and for uh, we are now having uh, other groups from across the state coming in to see what we're doing here. So I'd just like to thank you for recognizing uh, staff. recognition also uh, for Mr. Mauger and Mr. Dr. Marchini for the work that they uh, put in for the mock crash. We had a mock crash here for the, uh, and all their teams. There's a lot of people involved for the juniors and seniors, and I think it was a great event. Um, a lot of uh, organizations helped with that, Goodwill Fire, or Goodwill Ambulance Ridge Fire Company, State Police, all the local police departments and the high school. And I think it was a great event, and I thank you all for your, your work on that. Item 11 on the agenda, or item 12 on the agenda, I'm sorry, old business, and Mrs. Cromine. That brings us to item 13 on the agenda, new business. <coughs> item 13.1, approval of policy 619, district audit for the second reading, as recommended by the LNP committee. Second. Moved by Mrs. McMeekin, second by Ms. Polinsky. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 13.2, approval of di district pay schedule for the 2011-2012 fiscal year as presented. Second. Moved by Mrs. Blinsky, second by Mrs. McMeekin. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 13.3, acceptance of the retirement for Mrs. Darlene Compatello 
Move, moved by Mrs. Minkin, second by Mrs. Galinsky. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 13.4, approval of retirement resolution. So For Mrs. Compatello. Second. Moved by Mrs. McMeekin. Second by Mrs. Belinsky. Any discussion? She's not here. She don't think I should read this one. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 13.5, acceptance of resignations as presented. Moved by Mrs. Bolinski, second by Mrs. McMeekin. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 13.6, approval of the following child rearing leaves as presented. Moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. McMeekin, second by Mrs. Bolinski. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 13.7, ratification of interim principal. Moved by Mrs. McMeekin, second by Mrs. Belinsky. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 13.8, ratification and approval of the following part-time and casual appointments as presented. Moved, moved by Mrs. Belinsky, second by Mrs. McMeekin. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 13.9, approval of school psychologist. So moved. moved by Mrs. Linsky, second by Mrs. McMeekin. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 13.10, approval of a confidential settlement and release agreement as presented. So moved. moved by Mrs. Belinsky, second by Mrs. McMeekin. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1311, approval of policy 328.1, salary determination for administrative employees as presented. Second. Moved by Mrs. Belinsky, Belink second by Mrs. McMeekin. Belinkin. I'll just uh, we'll shorten things up. Belinkin. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1312, approval of policy 333-339. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Hughes. Shaking it up. Please. Second by Mrs. McMeekin. Any discussion? I just don't want to. Sure. Did, did we verify the, uh, the holiday schedule? Uh, yes, it was actually 11 holidays because the Atlanta was 12 months. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1313, approval of policy 508.2. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. McMeekin, second by Mrs. Polinsky. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1314, approval of policy 508.3. Salary determination, confidential employees as presented. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Belinsky, second by Mrs. McMeekin. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1315, approval to eliminate positions as presented. So moved. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Kleinfelder, second by Mrs. McMeekin. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1316, approval to reduce the 2011-12 budgetary reserve. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Belinsky, second by Mrs. McMeekin. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1317, approval to reduce 2011-12 general fund transfer. Moved by Ms. McMeekin, second by Mrs. Belinsky. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1318, 
approval of 2011 Homestead and Farmstead resolution as presented. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Meekin, second by Ms. Belinsky. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1319, approval of resolution establishing tax collector compensation. Second. Moved by Mrs. Belinsky, second by Mrs. McMeekin. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1320, approval of appointment of bond coverage. Facsimile signature moved by Mrs. McMeekin. Second by Mrs. Belinsky. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1321, approval of agreements for automated processing of tax payments. Second. Moved by Mrs. Meekin. Second by Mrs. Belinsky. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1322, approval to grant diplomas to members of the class of 2011. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Bislin. Second by Mrs. McMeekin. Board discussion? Mr. Fries? Question? You're welcome. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. Item 1323, approval of high school summer program. So moved. moved by Mrs. McMeekin. Second. Second by Mrs. Belinsky. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1324, approval of conference attendance as presented. So moved. moved by Mrs. McMeekin. Second. Second by Mrs. Belinsky. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1325, approval of professional services and maintenance agreements as presented. So moved. moved by Mrs. McMeekin. Second. Second by Mr. Kleinfelder. Any discussion? I, I just have one question. Um, there are several different entities on this, and the last one being uh, Creative Health. Would that one... Um, it only is inclusive when we use someone, or is it a set rate that we go, go above? Um, I only saw the backup that said so much per hour. I think it's $36 per hour. But is there someone looking at the hours? Do they recommend the amount of hours, or how do we know how much is going to be spent each time? Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1326, approval of rate of pay for dental and medical examiners. So moved. Moved by Mrs. McMeekin. Second. Second by Mrs. Belinsky. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1327. Approval of medical and dental examiners for the 11-12 school year. Second. Moved by Mrs. McMeekin. Second. Second by Mrs. Belinsky. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1328, approval of extended school year staff. Second. Moved by Mrs. McMeekin. Second. Second by Mrs. Belinsky. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1329, approval of in lieu of FAPE agreement. So moved. moved by Mrs. McMeekin, second by Mrs. Belinsky. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1330, approval of acceptance of proposal for senior portraits. So moved. moved by Mrs. McMeekin, second by Mrs. Belinsky. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? 
Motion passes. Item 1331, award of bids in accordance with the CCIU joint purchasing agreement. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Belinsky, second by Mrs. McMeekin. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1332, approval of bus driver appreciation week resolution. Second. Moved by Mrs. Meekin, second by Mrs. Belinsky. Board discussion? I'm going to take a moment and read the resolution. Approval of the resolution for bus driver appreciation week from May 23rd to May 27th, 2011. Whereas bus drivers in service of the district demonstrate a commitment to the safe transportation of our most precious possessions, our children, despite often adverse weather and road conditions, whereas our bus drivers are often placed in extreme stressful situations which require a high degree of physical and physiological stamina and endurance, whereas our bus drivers have demonstrated a record of safety and efficiency in the performance of their duties, whereas our bus drivers make a positive contribution to the climate and self-esteem of students. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the ONJ Roberts School District and the Board of School Directors designate May 23rd through May 27th, 2011 as Bus Driver Appreciation Week in recognition of our bus drivers for all their efforts on behalf of the school district and its students. Adopted at the meeting of school directors of the ONJ Roberts School District on May 23rd, 2011. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Resolution passes. Item 1333, approval of proposal for main campus drainage work. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Kleinfelder, second by Mrs. Belinsky. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1334, approval of homebound instruction. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Bislins, second by Mrs. Belinsky. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1335, approval of community swim program for 2011-2012. Moved by Mrs. Belinsky. Second. Second by Mrs. McMeekin. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. That brings us to item 14 on the agenda, public comment on non-agenda items, information, proposals, statements from individuals pertaining to items other than those on the agenda. Speakers are to indicate their name and township of residence. We ask that you limit your comments to no more than three minutes. That brings us to item 15 on the agenda, board request for information. Yes, Mr. Priest. Uh, I'd like to get a uh, detailed listing of all of our elementary schools and what clubs uh, they are offering to see whether there's variation between their elementary schools. And I'd like to see that it's uh, standardized across the board. Thank you. Elementary yeah. school clubs, did you say? Clubs. Yes. After school. After school. Both during the year and summer? Do you have that, Mrs. Cremine? I do. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Freeze. Uh, that brings us to item 16, meeting adjournment. So moved. Moved by Mr. Hughes. Second, Second by Mr. Freeze. Thank you. That concludes our school board meeting this evening. <laughs>